Hello and welcome to Transmutational Thursday. This is another exciting installment of live, inspirational, common unity collaboration. In other words, we are collecting the best people together to... Do I have to mute you there? We're collecting the best people together to um, bring uh, wisdom and consciousness forwards uh, into your world. Uh, my name is Mark Abadi. Uh, today we have Jennifer Haust. Um, that's house with a T, and um, she is a nutritional chef and, uh, and a coach who coaches people on anxiety and acidification of the body or alkalization of the body is the more appropriate. And we'll be on with her in a minute. So please like and share. In particular, sharing is the important bit. Have watch parties. That's the way to share the love. And all the other videos I've done are on my live stream. So enjoy that. Right. Without further ado. We'll go to Jen. Jennifer, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good, thank you. Wonderful. Did you manage to share the video? Yes. Super. Yeah, I, I mean, shared it. I, I shared the event. Is that okay? Or no. Do I need to... You have to go and find the video on Facebook and share it. Oh, my word. Right. So, um, <laughs> so I got to go to Mark Abadi. You go to Mark Abadi Prof. The pe the my yes, um, I got it. I got it. We're live. Oh my god. Here we go. Oh my god. We're live on Facebook. <gasps> How's my hair? <laughs> so uh, okay, Jennifer, I'm sharing it. Yes. Now, are you are you ready? Can you multitask? I did it. I did it. We're good. Wonderful. We're good. Now, <laughs> I, I see you did it. Excellent. Tell us about yourself, Jen. Okay, Tell hold on. Let background. me silence us over on the live. Oh, you have to mute okay. the live okay. on. I did the, it, I did it. On the feed, yeah. Okay, so um, I am a chef and I've been helping people uh, reverse their digestive disorders for about 10 years. And um, I got into this uh, business because I got a digestive disorder. And I'm a chef, I was a chef before that. I was a private chef on yachts. I kind of traveled around the world doing that. And I, you know, I got really sick. I got adrenally fatigued. I got beat up by that. So I decided to um, uh, study food, go back to food as medicine and look at how, where my lifestyle and food connected so I could um, help other people. And I started a company called Earthly Juices. Maybe some in the community knows us. We did quite a few festivals. That's actually how we met you through Bhakti right. Fest. Right. I don't know. Maybe we met through Jacqueline originally. Oh, Jacqueline. Yeah, but mm -hmm. at Bhakti Fest. Right. I was there yes. the night she met you, actually. Oh, really? How yes. wonderful. <laughs> Our dreams, what dreams are made of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have a company called Earthly Juices. Uh, you can find us at Bring Me Juice. And we deliver juice cleanses and vegan foods and meal plans to people in LA and the OC. And I also have a podcast called The Earthly Dish, where we uh, interview practitioners like yourself um, about their tips of the trade or their tricks of the trade for keeping a healthy body. You know, I'm really interested in supporting people in uh, being their own doctor, their own barometer, like getting into like healing yourself rather than looking outwards for someone else to validate you, to help right. you become well. I feel like the the body has an innate ability to heal itself. You just have to kind of tap into it. And yeah, so that's okay, me that in a nutshell. Sense. That makes sense. So what are you noticing, uh, you know, what's going on these days? What's, what's different? Um, I mean, now it's all about, you know, empowering selves. That's great. Everyone, everyone, you know, wants to be empowered, especially at this time. But um, what are you noticing people doing, uh, saying, wanting, that sort of stuff? I'm noticing that like a lot of people are concerned if they can shop for themselves. They're actually asking us to shop for them or cook for them because mm. they're concerned about being exposed because of the virus that's out there running rampant. And, um, you know, I think it's safe to shop for yourself actually, but what I've noticed with my own self, cause I have to go into the store about three days a week. I have to go into the store and buy stuff. Right. that I can't get delivered. And I noticed what was happening with me is, you know, I put on my mask, I put on my gloves, I get all suited up to do it. But what happened with me, I was noticing I'd be in the store for 30, 40 minutes because I have a lot to buy. I make a list before I go in so I'm organized, you know. Yeah. 
because I'm shopping from, you know, 10, 15 people at once. Right. And um, I was noticing, though, by the time I got to the register, my chest was hurting. And I was noticing that, in fact, my chest was burning. And it just kept happening. And then I had a talk with my mom about it, who's kind of a mindfulness practitioner. Right. And she told me that she thought I might be having a small anxiety attack because I was facing like if I would live or die just by going to the grocery store, which is like kind of a, a weird thing to happen. But you going to the grocery store. It's just a grocery store, right? right? But it's not. I was facing what it is on a biological chemical level. Am I safe or not? Right? Am I safe in my body? Am I not safe in my body? Could right. I get sick here? And even though I was never thinking about that, I was busy on my list and making sure I was getting my things done. What was happening is my adrenals were kicking on and they were producing cortisol. And that cortisol was dumping into my digestive tract and it was making my, me have some acid reflux. And this and, was because you were worried about health. You were, you were yeah, worried because about I was concerned that I would catch a virus that kills people. Okay. You know, and it's not like I was concerned mentally. That's the crazy thing here that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I was concerned physically. My biochemistry was changing because my heart rate was increasing. And I noticed by the time 30, 40 minutes went by of being in fight or flight, which is what happens when you have adrenal fatigue issues, you have a trigger happy system, like you're a little trigger happy. Mm -hmm. And your body, if it senses anything that seems dangerous or not safe, makes a massive amount of cortisol. And then that cortisol is dumped into the digestive tract because it's not used, right? right. And that causes acidity and acid overproduction. And I wanted to talk about this because I know a lot of people might have a lot of fear coming up, you know, of what's going on in the world and where we're going. And they might have situations like this where you get, you're, you're kind of stressed or pressurized and you don't know what to do next. So, um, I came up with a strategy and that's kind of what I wanted. One of the things I wanted to share today. Yeah. I came up with a strategy that when I got, whoa, oh my God, that was fun. When I got back to my, when you, when you got to drop the, uh, the computer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When I got back to my car, I would, you know, wipe down my hands, take off my mask, take off my gloves. And then I would use a little bit of mindfulness. I would check in with my body. And I often tell my clients to do this when I'm coaching them, check in with your body. Like when you eat that thing, does your body feel horrible after? Or does your body feel really good? Or is that good feeling only temporary and you then sink lower? To tune into one's body is like an amazing thing. So what I would do when I got back to my car, before I moved on to the next thing, this is the important part. Yeah. I would check with my body. I would say, hey body, how are you? What's going on? And then I would notice my heart rate was elevated. My stomach felt like it was burning. My shoulders were tense and at my ears, mm. you know? And then I, I would start to speak. I put my stomach, on, my hands on my stomach and my gut. And I would say, you're safe. Everything's all right. And then I would start breathing deeper into my stomach and like become present like mindful of like where I am like okay this is where I am okay I'm not in danger okay I'm safe and what I started to see happen as I practiced because I had to invent a practice to deal with this anxiety that was coming up right. I started to notice that my body actually got used to the rhythm of coming back to the car three days a week and doing a small meditation practice practice of getting mindful and getting back in the body I think in the fear of not knowing if we're going to die right? It's kind of a really deep concept. We start to leave the body. We start to go up into the head, into our mind, and our body actually loses connection with our mind and our soul. And I had to kind of like work with this and then bring it back down and bring my energy back down. And I noticed the acidity would come up and then I would do this mindfulness and this breath work and I'd bring myself right back into my body. And I, I notice a lot of my clients talking about fear, talking about anxiety, just like driving it up, you know? And I just wanted to share about like, 
that you have the ability, just like you do to choose what you eat and how, and how you treat your body and when you go to bed and all these great things, you have the ability, even when you've been hijacked, like when your brain has gone into fight or flight, you have the ability to bring it back in through the breath, to bring it back in and be mindful of what's happening with you and actually speak to your gut. You can speak to your gut and you can say to it, I am safe, here I am, please slow my heartbeat, please sink in and drop in into my breath. And yeah, so I wanted to share about that because it's such a, a powerful thing when anxiety hijacks you. You know what what else can you do i mean you know there's the obvious talking to yourself and kind of talking yourself down what else yeah. can you do in terms of you know what you're what you're eating and drinking is is, oh, is yeah. that time and, you know down a cup of lemon juice i mean or is right it right right so one of the things that happens when we have adrenal fatigue or we have fatigue in general is uh our body when it goes into fight or flight it uses up massive b vitamins right? We're using up a lot of pancreatic acid, which is B5. We're using up B12. And these are all soothers. These work to soothe the adrenals and support the body and making the hormones that keep you calm and satiated. They calm the mind. Mm -hmm. And some of the, I, you know, I can share some of one of my favorite B vitamins with you right now, since we're in my kitchen. Um, this is a liquid day formula from Sunstar Organics. And it has 21 of the amino acids you need for building your digestion and all of the B complexes that you need, the B3, the B12, the B5, you know, the niacin, everything that you need in order to calm the nervous system. And when I meet people that are caught in fight or flight, which I often do, I seem to attract those types. You know, I'm a type A personality. I'm like, you know, really go get her, right? So naturally, I attract people that are like that. They're just like, go, 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 go. I got my own business. I'm going to kick this ass. You know, I'm going to make it happen, right? But they're often suffering from being stuck in fight or flight. And you can't think very well when you're in fight or flight. So really making sure when you, if you're in a state of ongoing fight or flight, right? You're like, I can't get out of this. Really make sure that you start giving yourself a lot of B vitamins, like B vitamins when you wake up instead of coffee, which is so stimulating that you go off the Richter scale, right? You go up so far in your creativity and everything, but then you crash out. So the B vitamins are gonna bring a middle line, even if you're hung over, like one of the things that you really wanna to give to your body is B vitamins. The other thing that I really like is uh, turmeric and ginger. These are anti-inflammatory and then aloe and coconut water. These are mineralizing. So. Mm -hmm. The other thing that gets used up when we are like uh, stressing out is magnesium. We just lose magnesium like it's going out of style. And I want to show you guys another thing. This is a really cool product. Um, this is uh, pure magnesium oil from Trace Minerals. And this stuff is so cool. Like say you get this, right? <laughs> like what is going on? Okay, I'm tense, right? We put my shoulders down. And I can spray a little bit of this on my body. And what it is, is it's magnesium. And it goes right in. I can just massage it mm -hmm. into my body. You can put it on your gut, too, if your gut is stuck because you're so tense, right? Put it on your gut, and it will help you eliminate. Magnesium, the force of it is so powerful. It can uh, make you able to do this, right? Like this undulating like seaweed, if you think about it. You want to find your seaweed body because when you're flight or flight, you look like this, right? When you're mineralized and you're relaxed, you look like wavy gravy, you know? <laughs> like, and that's what you wanna do. You wanna, you wanna tune into that. Another great way to get like magnesium into your body on the regular is to make green juices. You know, right now I'm drinking a green juice. It's uh, lemon, ginger, celery, a little bit of spinach. I got some kale in there and parsley. You know, just to keep my body hydrated and mineralized. Being mineralized is the key. Like so many people are deficient in magnesium. And the number one thing that happens when you're deficient in magnesium is your muscles tighten, mm. which is also the number one thing that happens when you're stressed out. Right. All your muscles get so tight. So yeah, releasing and opening and hydrating, you know, and then that mindfulness practice, like talking to your gut and telling your gut, I am safe. 
I am present. You know, even maybe noticing where you are with each breath, say, okay, I see the sunlight. I feel the sunlight. I see where I am. Like, you know, with the eyes open, not, I mean, a lot of practices, we do it with the eyes shut, right? But this, like getting present and in tune with your body and like back in, like dropping back in, you do it with your eyes open so you can really be present to where you are. So uh, let's talk a little bit. Thank you for that. Those tips. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, Sorry. I yeah, no, just have to get the magnesium in ordered. Um, mm -hmm. about, you know, you talk about these people, these go getters. Um, go getters, yeah. Yeah, the go getters. Do you think they're, they're finding it particularly hard these days or particularly easy? You know, it's a mixed bag. Like some of my like high end sort of coaching clients like are blowing it up, I have to say. Uh, like we feed them so they're well nourished and present. And they're just finding these times actually exciting because they're getting online like you are. You started this amazing feed that's so cool, you know. I'm excited to see your feeds, you know. So sometimes being like shut down on the outside can make you open internally, right? So I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing a lot of people that are afraid. And they're coming to us to feed them and care for them because of anxiety and they're also coming to us because they just don't want to leave their houses right now they don't feel safe so what are you doing you're providing juices you're you're yeah we do juices smoothies and we do vegan meal plans and we deliver them to your doorstep in la and the oc we've been doing that for about i guess this is our ninth year of business wow you can find us at bringmejuice.com bringmejuice.com and yeah, I also have a podcast where I interview practitioners about different topics that they're experts at, and that's um, at Earthly Dish Radio. Find that on Facebook. Cool. Yeah. What, what are you finding um, is is most interesting about this shutdown? I, you know, I I just have been really excited to like work with my own anxiety. I mean, like it, to not to make it about me. Like, honestly, the rest of my life hasn't changed very much. Mm -hmm. I'm still of service. I'm still healing people. And now I started doing some live feeds where I'm teaching online through chefspeed.com. And that's cool. But the main thing for me has been dealing with my own digestive system, dealing with my own fear of dying. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but you know, like I don't want to die. <laughs> and, uh, like my body doesn't want to die. And then being triggered on a regular basis has been a way to learn about myself, you know, like quite often when you have digestive disorders, but you get them under control and you get your lifestyle pattern in order, you're going to bed at the right time, you're exercising, you know, I mean, maybe that's the biggest challenge for me. I have to make sure I exercise at home and that's, that's a bit difficult, you know, but I have been, I don't know, leading yoga for me and my partner, which is like, what? You know, now he's getting the attention he wanted before, you know, and I was not giving it before. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I don't know, learning, trying to make sure I exercise and then also learning to manage any anxiety, anxiety that comes up. Um, I mean, here's another thing. If you have anxiety that comes up and your stomach is burning, like you're like, oh my God, I'm burning inside. What do I do? How do I reverse this immediately? If you need a quick fix, you can go Dr. McCullough's route where you take like a tablespoon or half a tablespoon of uh, baking soda, aluminum free, preferably, mm -hmm. put it in about eight ounces of water, drink it, and it will alkalize, it will neutralize any acid that your body might be creating temporarily because of anxiety. And, uh, but you can't keep doing that. That's right. just a quick fix. If you keep doing that, what will happen is you'll get something that's called liver reflux instead of like acid reflux, which is the esophagus not closing because of stress and various, you know, hormonal things that happen when we stress out or get in fight or flight. Uh, liver reflux is a result of your body not making enough bile. And when you drink, uh, when you do my Dr. McCullough's trick, you annihilate it. You go from acidic environment to really alkaline quickly, which is great because you get out of pain immediately, which is really nice, right? But in the long term, there's a better solution if you get liver reflux problems. If you have a liver reflux problem, what happens is you wake up 
and you have it's a hard swallow. Have you ever had that? You eat too late and you wake up and you have a hard swallow. It's because there's still food in your gut that hasn't moved on. And as a result, your bile is not coming out of your liver. It's like the process got stopped because you ate too late, right? It's a little complicated, but one of the things I like to suggest is this product. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> it's like a medicine cup in here. All right. Um, <laughs> Of healthy things, right? These are healthy liver bitters. They're from artichoke and raw honey, and it's made by Urban Moonshine. And this helps if you have liver reflux, that which means your bile is not being produced enough. There's not enough bile being produced for you to alkalize your food. You're staying acidic, and then it's burning in your small intestine. But if you take this, like when you eat, what happens is your body creates more bile. So your whole digestive system starts to work well. A lot of people, they have uh, gallbladder issues. They have trouble digesting fats. This over about 30 days, you take it whenever you eat, will actually begin to clear and uncongest the liver and the gallbladder of bile salts and various things that calcify in there. Instead of getting an operation, you can actually literally dissolve your stones yourself, you know? Yeah, so, it's a lot uh, of data. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, a stone, stone dissolving sounds fun. Um, yes, so yes, what, yeah, get rid of the stones. What about, what about the, the interaction of, you know, the psychology with, with this process? You know, what, what's going on um, in, in, in people's tension around fear of death? I mean, is that connected to... Well, I can tell you what's going on with me. I mean, whenever I feel like, you know, I have a very sensitive system, obviously, because I had a digestive disorder that I managed for 10 years, you know. Um, when your mind is caught in a loop, like a negative loop, your body follows suit. It says, okay, so we have a tiger at the door. We need to, you know, load share all of our energy and put it into what's gonna make us safe. And that's usually making cortisol and cortisol uh, protects us like a stress blanket, but too much cortisol that's unused, right? Cause it's actually a mental thing that's happening, not a physical thing. You're not going to run from your tiger. Right. It's, it, it's a tiger in your mind. Um, then like your body, it has all that cortisol. It's in your bloodstream, right? And guess where it dumps it into your stomach it jumps it into your digestive tract as it, it's just so yeah like what you think and how anxious you are you know you ever heard people have a nervous stomach that's what they're talking about it's that your adrenals are on overdrive and your mind is making them think there's a tiger and then your cortisol is going up and then the leftover cortisol you don't use is dumped into the digestive tract which makes you burn so yeah, you got to get a hold of your mind, you know? I mean, that's what you work with people on, right? right so get, yeah, so getting hold of your mind, what does that mean? It, it, you know, for me, it means mind. when your energy is leaving, like leaving your body because you're caught in your mind and you're caught in like trying to fix a problem or trying to um, survive a, a difficult situation, you got to slow down and you got to talk to your mind and your body and you got to bring your energy back inside your body. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, you got to get inside and set it. It's an inside job, not an outside one. An inside job. Uh, an inside yeah. Job. Yeah. Um, another thing, too, that's really, really, uh, my clients have been speaking to me about is they're not sleeping the way they used wow. to. And I do believe it's because of the media and how much fear they're putting out there. They're putting out like, oh my God, all these people are going to die millions and millions and we're in danger and we have to hide inside. And, you know, that's really intense information to hear every day over and over through sound bites, right? And um, one of the things we need to do at night is unplug your Wi-Fi after you finish with your internet. Unplug it. And also uh, turn it off two hours before you go to bed. Like, right, don't so be looking is, at your screen in bed and trying to fall right. asleep. Do your meditation where you get present with your body and, and do even like they call it a body scan where you go from your toes 
up to your nose, checking in with every, with each breath. You breathe in and then you say, okay, those are my toes. And then you breathe out, breathe back in, okay, those are my shins. This you know, notion, you get in the body and then at night, you know, you got it, you got to sleep. You got to go to bed because your body needs to detox at night. And if you're not detoxing, then you're not really, you're not sleeping, you're not detoxing. Like you need to be in bed by like 11 at the latest, like 10 o'clock is really good too. Because it goes through the whole body. It starts at the colon and works all the way up to your brain by the time you wake up at nine in the morning or eight in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So, so for this notion that people, um, it's like the, it seems like it's like anxiety about sleeping can come from, <laughs> you know, you've not, you've not done enough for the day. So you're anxious about that. Um, sure. you've, um, uh, you, you, but you might, um, it's not, it might not be a, you've not done enough, but you might actually fear sleeping because you don't know what's going on. Yeah. There's this crazy energy in the air. We don't know what comes next. Right. Which right. is beautiful for some and gets them inspired and for others, not so much because they're worried. You know, that worrying and worrying sits in your gallbladder of all places, which goes back to supporting your gallbladder right now with these, these right. bitters, you know. The other thing at night, I, I have some recommendations. Um, if you want to sleep at night, I just did a class on this. You can make an elixir, uh, like a night night elixir. It's like hot tea, but you right. would use uh, chaga mushrooms to kind of deescalate the nervous system. And then uh, you just so heat it up in water. Like? Sleep tea. Yeah, it's sort of like a sleepy tea. And then I have this other formula. This is called the Pothecary. It's from Purium, which is P-U-R-I-U-M. If you go to their website. That's uh, uh, David's company, right? It is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a cool product, though, because it, it raises your, uh, what is it called? Melatonin. It raises your met melatonin naturally. And I make a little elixir at night and I, I turn off my technology, you know, give myself an hour and a half to kind of decompress from the technology because it's very stimulating. I feel like maybe some people aren't sleeping because they're overstimulated by how much people are sharing. Right. Right. And of course, they're going yeah. to be exposing themselves to more technology throughout the day than ever before. Yeah, because, yeah, and go outside, get some sunshine. <laughs> Don't forget that, you know. Don't well, stay yeah. in front of your computer all day long. It's bad for you. <laughs> like, yeah. Here in Marin. So make a little elixir, and then I put a little coconut oil in it also. Um, I like the cherry formula and the chaga mushroom and a little honey. And then you just sip on it, and it's almost like you're inviting your adrenals and your body to relax. And you could even say that to yourself. Right. You know, may you be at peace. You know, you can do the meta or the mantras. May you be at ease. Or I am at ease. I am ready for sleep. May I rejuvenate. Like all of these, yeah, like in, in Buddhist mindfulness, they talk about the meta phrases. May you be at peace. You can even do prayers for other people out there. May all the people that are suffering from coronavirus break through and be well. Or may they move to the other side where they're free you know so these are kind of my like my, my wake it up middle of the day and go to sleep sort of ideas and what about resting in the middle of the day how's that this, this, well that? a lot of people yeah a lot of people that have adrenal fatigue they need a nap and don't feel guilty just give yourself a nap you know like one of my greatest guilty pleasures is is to take a nap with my son like he takes non, a nap every day non-guilty pleasures yes 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 he's three years old he needs a nap well why don't i so right. i might lay down with him for an hour and just regroup i notice I, I, quite often what happens people that have adrenal overload or they're like you know they're just burning it burning it right um right. you get tired in the afternoon and a nap is a helpful thing for rebuilding the adrenals. And then you wake up at three in the morning and you're just full of ideas and can't go back to bed. And that's because you have too much cortisol in your system. So. 
All right, so what do, you do those, what do you do in those cases? You wake up in the middle of the night, it's 3 a.m. You don't want to eat anything, really. But what no, do you do? definitely don't. Oh, that's the other thing. Like, so cut off your technology two hours before you go to bed. And also, with your eating, don't eat at night. I know it's so hard, but really when you eat at night, what you're doing is you're growing fungus inside your digestive tract. And that causes all sorts of issues like itchy skin, sinus problems, respiratory issues when you have an overgrowth of fungus in the digestive tract. And fungus, it lives at night. And this is the bad fungus, not the, not the good fungus like this. This is the good fungus, the chaga. But like, yeah, so you want to cut off your eating kind of like at seven. You know, I wouldn't eat after seven. They say don't eat after dark. I call it the gremlin syndrome, people that eat at midnight. Right. Yeah, because what happens is the food just sits in there the entire night. Your hunger is actually mental. And so you're not I, actually hungry. <laughs> you're just you're craving. You're craving food because you want something to feel better. And yeah. Right. There's a notion of being dehydrated as well, isn't there, when, when you're actually hungry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite often people mix up uh, thirst with hunger. When I have people that are trying to deal with weight loss, um, one thing I tell them is you need to start checking your body and asking it, are you hungry or are you thirsty? And they look at me like I'm weird at first and then they start to do it and they're like, oh my God, my body told me it's freaking thirsty. It's not hungry, you know? So. Okay. So now you wake up in the middle of the night, three. So you wake up in the middle of the night and what to do, right? How do you decompress your nervous system? I, um, I might get up and bake a cup of tea and then do some of these meta practices if it was me. If I woke up and I was full of ideas, right, which happens too um, when you wake up in the middle of the night, sit down and write them down, you know, write them out so you, you have them in the morning. But I wouldn't try to stay up. I would try to go inward, maybe do the body scan that I talked about and continue breathing. And what about eating anything? I wouldn't eat. I would, if you need to have something in the night, I would have a cup of tea. Because if you're eating in the middle of the night, you're actually not eating. You're just uh, putting food in your face. It's going to be sitting in your gut until you wake up in the morning because at night your body is detoxing. Mm. Um, yeah, crazy, right? People well, don't even think about it. Yeah, so it, it, it's detoxing in a sense that um, getting rid of the toxins, wouldn't that be a good time to eat some unhealthy food because then it gets rid of the toxins? Or no. Like a chocolate cake just before bed? No. no, no. Even though that, that you're feeding your mind. See, there's a big difference. You're, um, feeding, my your, emotions. you're feeding your mind. You're not feeding your stomach. Your body won't digest that until the next morning at 10 o'clock. And actually you'll be generating a form of what's called liver reflux, where your body can't do it. Like that's the crazy thing about the body. Like we have to load share right? Like if you have a car, like you're saying like, oh, if I put chocolate cake in my transmission in the middle of the night, will it work better than the day? No. <laughs> I know, right? I know. And it's really nice too. Like the other thing I do with my night night elixirs, just to give myself a treat, because you don't really want to have a lot of sugar at night because you're feeding your fungus inside. What I do is I'll put a little cacao in there also. So it's like a cacao cherry sort of warm drink so i'm giving myself like a hot cocoa replacement Doesn't and i do that but i don't do it right at bed i do it like an hour and a half before because it's part of the winding down like my son he's three we give him a bath you know we get him dressed we get him in his diaper like we get him ready for bed you've got to do the same thing for your body get you ready for bed you know that makes sense and and so cacao yeah, is, it's all logical cacao is a stimulant though isn't it Cacao is a stimulant, but it also has an analgesic effect that it makes you relax your central nervous system. So it's a, it's a powerful thing. Now, I mean, some people, what they do, like, like your chocolate cake syndrome, they want to give themselves a little treat. They'll just have a small piece of dark chocolate, which does the same thing. It turns on the same neurotransmitters. That's what's cool. Not a whole you know? bar, like I do. No, that's too much. I mean, that's the other thing. We got to be gentle with ourselves. 
you know, especially in this time of high stress, we've got to try to do whatever we can to self nurture. Yeah. And if you do need your chocolate cake, right? Like you just like can't stop craving it for three days in a row and you're like fighting yourself every night, waking up at three in the morning, wanting to eat it, right? My recommendation is that you have it after lunch. Yeah. Have it like your, your smallest meal of the day should be at the end of the day. So at the top of the day, you're gonna have a small meal. Your biggest meal should be the middle of the day. And then at the end of the day, you're gonna have like a soup or something easily digestible. The more digestible your food, the more energy you'll have too. That's why a smoothie to start the day is a powerful thing to do. It's pre-digested and ready to go. Your body can just uptake the energy, you know. Uh, even before that, I would start my day with uh, water and lemon and some minerals or sea salt. And right. that, what that does is hydrates your belly lining so it can begin to make gastric juices. It's a really valuable thing to have strong gastric hot, juices. Hot water, hot water and lemon. Hot water, lemon, a little sea salt. It's a really great way to kind of hydrate the stomach lining. Mm. So many people, they go straight for food and what they're doing is they're making kind of a cluster uh, fuck or cluster <laughs> issue in the stomach. They're, uh, they're like not hydrated enough to begin to make gastric juice so they can't actually break down the food that they've eaten. Can you close that door? I'm sorry, I know it's hot in here. Um, and so, so We're almost done. <laughs> let's talk about sh the sugars and the, and the, um, you know, sugars okay. in fruits because there's, there's some school of thought that says that, that, you know, even the sugars in fruit are bad and can feed the unhealthy gut bacteria. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I totally disagree. I think that... Uh, and things like that. What was it? Candida. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you have candida, you do need to pay attention to how much, uh, how much sugar you put into your diet, for sure. But um, I, I find that fruit by itself is super powerful agent for detoxing the body. Mm. So, like, yesterday I made... Uh, I made a plate of fruit for my family and it, and we just ate it by itself. And what it does is gets gastric juices moving. And we did like uh, tropical fruits are really powerful for uh, growing gastric juices. We did uh, pineapple, papaya, um, dragon fruit. And then I like to put sauerkraut with it because I'm just wild for sau sauerkraut. <laughs> That's just my weird thing. Um, well, raw cabbage juice has the ability to heal ulcers in the digestive tract. But yeah, fruit is, I think fruit is good for you, fruit is good for you uh, by itself. Like I don't put fruit with animal protein because it ferments in the belly. Um, if you're doing fruit smoothies uh, with nut milks, you want to take the fiber out because the fiber slows it down uh, too much and it can start fermenting. It's with fruit, it's more about food combining. That's what I think about. I think about like, what am I having my fruit with? Because my fruit is this powerful agent to detox the body. And people that have candida, uh, fruit is tough on them. They have to be very particular about which fruits and they wanna eat green fruits rather than like yellow or orange or red fruits. So examples might be like green apples and green grapes. These have the ability actually to fight there's, there's a phytonutrient in, in the greens that help to, to knock out candida. The other thing that's really great if you have candida issues is you can uh, take oregano, like one drop of oregano in the morning and then at night, like your night-night elixir could be the oregano in about eight ounces of warm water and then you, you drink it. If you have it really bad in your chest, like a lot of people get it in their lungs and they're always coughing out stuff, what you can do is mix it with a little coconut oil, the oregano oil, like one or two drops, and then rub it on your chest. And it will heat up your chest. Also, you can rub it in your sinuses if you have sinus trouble, you know? Watch out, watch out for your eyes, right? But yes, you definitely have to watch out your eyes and you cannot do it by itself. You have to have a carrier oil. It's very or, strong. Yes, very strong. But for drinking it, if you were to do, say you had candida, you did a two week cycle. You did a drop in the morning and a drop in the night for the first few days and then two drops in the morning, two drops in the night the next few days. 
if you did that for let's say two weeks or three weeks, you won't have a candida problem anymore, most likely. And candida is related to dehydration and demineralization. Mm -hmm. When you're demineralized, like because you don't eat enough organic, like beautiful leafy green vegetables, which is what happens, and the soils are depleted, uh, you end up like, uh, you end up in a state where the fungus can kind of take over and you're eating at night. So you have to mineralize the body, hence the magnesium again that I was talking about earlier, and also fresh juices. You have to hydrate and mineralize the body when you have candida taking place because it's, it's dehydrating you and demineralizing you with its filet. It has these little legs that trench into the digestive tract. I know, it's a lot of data. What about other, other um, you know, gut bacteria that might be, you know, controlling, we call them the monsters in the stomach, you know, that might be controlling you and saying, yes, eat the cake, eat the chips. Right, right. What so it goes, it goes back doing? to lifestyle pattern, right? Uh -huh. You have to make a commitment to yourself to be well. And one of the ways to do that is you got to get past the candida cravings if you have fungal overgrowth because you've been eating at night many, 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 many months and years, you know? So, you know, it's hard. It's hard. That's why I kind of came up with that night elixir I was talking about because it gives you something a little sweet, not really sweet, and it gives you the ability to kind of satiate and relax your system and say, I'm not having any food after seven o'clock. I'm committing to not feeding fungus because fungus is something that grows over time because of people's bad habits. You know, they get demineralized, they get dehydrated, they, they're eating late at night, and as a result, they have food sitting in their stomach overnight fermenting. They're in a fermenting state in the gut, and then eating fruit that's not green fruit, like sweeter fruits, uh, tropical fruits like mango and all that, you can't really eat them because you have so much bacteria inside that those fruits actually will make those blow up. You know what I mean? So, so what you're saying, the normal fruits will, will make the candida. Yeah, if you don't eat green fruits. The one, one exception that I found with uh, candida is that if you do like a uh, tangerine juice or pure grapefruit juice uh, mixed with like greens, uh, this is a candida killer. The skin on the grapefruit, the bioflavonoids on the outside of the lemon, this part, actually it, it, it kills it kills candida, hmm. so. Well, but you wouldn't have any fruit juice late at night, is that what you're saying? Oh, never. No, I don't drink juice at night, never. And no green juice, no, no. No, even if it's all veggie juice, I wouldn't drink it at night because it'll make you wired. And beet juice, you don't want to drink beet juice at night because that'll get you, you'll get wired and you won't actually sleep. You want to have your juices at the top of the day or the middle of the day, you know, um, can you can you not do that? Can you just wait? It's like really loud for them. We're almost done. Sorry, okay. we're in the juice bar. They want to work. Oh, no, so no, you're working. You're working. So yeah. Your emergency. So I wouldn't do I wouldn't do juices at night. If I'm doing juices, I'm doing them during the day. I cut them off at 4 p.m. After 4 p.m., like 4 p.m. is a good time when you want coffee. Hit up a red juice instead, and a red juice would be like beets and celery, carrot, apple, ginger, turmeric, or something like that. You hit that up at 4 p.m. and then you get your energy back up and then no more juice after that. You don't want juice for dinner. Soup and for dinner. What would you soup, eat? Soup, soup and salad for dinner, something light on the digestion. If, I, if someone feels like they wanna make a protein smoothie, they can, but I would say really not very much fruit in it you know, more fats, you wouldn't give your body like raw fats, like avocado or coconut beef, stuff like that. What about any super, super fruity, super foods? Like- uh, oh, I love durian. super foods. What about durian? Yeah, durian's fantastic. What, I, I, you can make know? smoothies with that. I just, you gotta be careful with the sweet barometer. As you go throughout the day, it's like less sweet, less sweet, less sweet. Right. That's why I said, if you wanna eat your chocolate cake, you eat your chocolate cake at noon, because that way your body will actually digest it instead of having it just sit in your stomach fermenting overnight. Right, so eat, eat sweet early. If you have to. And if you eat sweet, eat it with bitter. Bittersweet is the key. It's a really great way to like 
speaking of just like uh, prana, it raises your prana because it's it's a uh, what's it called a pita, a pita balance. So well, a bittersweet how, how would that work? drink. Bittersweet look like. Bittersweet example of a juice might be like grapefruit, pineapple, kale, spinach, and apple. Uh, bittersweet salad might be like dandelion with some dried cranberry, but you're not going to put nuts in there because that will make it ferment in your gut. If you're eating dried fruit, it should be just with greens and other veggies so it can process and not ferment. That's We're, dried fruit. Dried fruit, yeah. What about putting nut, nut smoothies, nut, um, you know, butters inside your smoothie? You can do that. I don't think that's a problem because it's protein with protein and you've taken out the fiber so it's not going to ferment. It's going to uptake quickly oh, we're concerned the with the, the real concern is with fruit that it ferments inside the gut if it's combined with things that are harder to digest like uh like animal protein or like seeds and nuts that have not been sprouted or soaked and it can create gas in the system because it's not moving quick enough right you have to think about transit from the beginning of your tube to the end okay, because, because you're, you're clogging it with other stuff well, because you're combining things that your gastric juices can't break down at the same rate. Does that make sense? Like it, it takes, for example, fruit, fruit uh, digests and goes through the stomach and the small intestine in about an hour. Uh, fruit and veggies, it takes about two hours. Fruit, veggie, and nuts together, it takes about 12 hours. Uh, you know, animal protein can take between 48 and 72 hours. Add fruit to it, and it will take four days to get through your gut. I mean. I, I suppose people don't have steak and strawberry sandwich or. Well, no, but a lot of people like to eat salmon with mango, mango salsa. Right, right? Or, or they have, what about melon before? And they have melon to start melon with. Alone. <laughs> melon alone. I remember Jacqueline used to eat that. Yeah, melon, melon by itself, pineapple melon by itself. <laughs> Starting your day with like fresh fruit, a big beautiful like plate of fresh fruit or a really beautiful like greens and fruit uh, smooth, uh, juice is great. Like you kind of want to think about priming your gut for eating. Like what's going to, fruit is the easiest thing to break down, right? So you can prime your gut that way. It's also really, really rich in vitamin C. Almost every fruit has a heap of vitamin C. Right. One of my also favorite uh, forms of vitamin C is camu camu, which is a superfood. Camu camu. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What were the fruits that you said should be alone? Melon. Melon by itself, yeah. What it's else? just it's a kidney flush, and you're doing yourself a great service. You could put a little chili powder on it if you want to make it interesting, or have it with cilantro if you want to make it a kind of a heavy metal cleanser. What other fruits can have to be by themselves? Um, I heard grapefruit. No. no. Grapefruits, you can do the bittersweet concoctions. Yeah. Grapefruit, you can put in your salads. No, grapefruit is fantastic, actually. It, it pairs well. Just don't put it with animal protein. Right. And I wouldn't put it with nuts either, because that's too, it's like, you have too much acid with too much alkaline, because nuts are alkalining. So this whole it, it creates conflict in the belly. So this whole fruit and nut business is bad for you? Well, no, you can do smoothies, but you got to make sure you take the fiber out of it. You got to make nut milk. You got to take, I have a video I'm putting out on how to make nut milk, actually. Um, I'll probably put it up tomorrow or the next day. Plus, I have a live stream coming up next Thursday at noon on Chef's Feed, where we'll be teaching you how to make uh, adaptogenic milks. Um, but yeah, you got to take the fiber out when you eat nuts, or you got to blend them into like, let's say uh, a cashew sauce or, or uh, um, a pesto. Like you gotta blend them up because whole nuts, and especially if they haven't been sprouted or anything mm. like that, are really hard to digest. Mm. No, but I, so I mean, you know, they have these trial trail mixes with fruit and- Yeah, it's a nightmare. So what, it's funny i had a client ask me that she's like well, what do i do for road snacks i love trail mix but every time i eat it my stomach blows up it's because dried fruit and un 
sprouted nuts are like the hardest thing to digest. And then often people have M&Ms or chocolate chips in there. So now you're adding sugar to the situation and it's like, you're just creating a putrefied mess to go through your gut that they call it, you know, like food to run up a mountain. It's not. All right. Okay. Okay. What about things like popcorn? Popcorn? No. Why? Uh, the little corns get caught in the, the little loops of your digestive tract. My friend who is a, uh, a colon hygiene therapist says she sees popcorn come out of people and they haven't eaten it in years. Oh dear. I mean, it comes out calcified on the other side, all locked together with mucus. So you see popcorn and mucus that gets caught in the gut. Sorry, that's gross, but that's the truth. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's good to know. I mean, as I say, I'm stuffing my face with popcorn almost every day because um, I pop it. It's all organic and nice, but no sugar, just popcorn. Yeah, I, I don't eat corn anymore. You don't eat corn. I remember Barry. Because it's all GMO. It's GMO. All of it. And I don't want to eat GMO because I don't want a three-headed baby, you know? Speaking of three-headed babies, um, <laughs> what about this notion that all uh, seedless fruit is GMO and thus not good for you? Like seedless grapes, seedless tangerines. Seedless yeah, it's, it's true, actually. So, so you wouldn't eat any seedless fruit? I try not to. All right. All right. I mean, I'm not perfect. You know, there's the, let's, you let's be real here. You know, like I fall off the wagon. Sometimes I got to eat a piece of chocolate cake at 11 o'clock at night. Someone came over with it and wants me to eat it. And I'm like, okay. But like, yeah. And these are just, you know, these are things like if you have a compromised system, you start to really pay attention to how your body reacts. You know, like you might find if you stop eating popcorn, if you find a substitute, something else that actually hits that same chocolate spot cake. in you. What? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. <laughs> Is that my substitute for popcorn? <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> maybe, maybe Mary's you know what? How about raw chocolate pudding? Raw chocolate pudding. I'm actually not eating any sugar at all. So You're my not. Good for you. Yeah, my, That's my good. Chocolate. That's good. My chocolate. And what did you wait? Mark, what did you notice after you stopped eating sugar? What happened for you? Um, <sighs> yeah, besides stressing out after that. Oh, no, no, that was my energy release. It was like I had power. I had um, um, exactly. awareness. I had energy. I had. So do you not eat fruit also? Well, I wasn't eating fruit at the time because I was doing some sort of candida uh, cleanse. So yeah. I, spent, I spent two months... Uh, maybe three months off fruit and off all sugars, honey, nuts, uh, all that stuff. It was a nightmare. Rice, I didn't even have. It was a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it was great because afterwards, it, you know, it really does feel a lot lighter and a lot more present. Um, yeah. You know, I lost yeah. about 15 pounds, you know. You look it. You look great. About $25, I think, 15 pounds. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so okay, so what about, what do people, like, how do people look after themselves in terms of the food they're cooking? Because I think a lot of people have been um, used to going to takeaways and to restaurants to basically look after themselves this entire time. What, you know, I mean, obviously fresh and raw, but are there things that we shouldn't be eating raw? Onions. Like, you know. Well, well, are the vegetables that we should avoid eating raw, even though we I can. think onions, I, green onions are okay, but onions are, are pretty acid forming in their raw state. Uh, you know, I I would just say if you if you can stop the night eating, you'll be like, you know, part part way there. And then I I wouldn't eat a lot of like snacky foods like chips or popcorn or anything like that. I try to fruits and vegetables you know and clean meats if if, if that's your vibe you know uh yeah you just i don't know take this opportunity of being inside to like pleasure yourself with with good foods because uh sugary foods just beat up your digestive system you know yeah. avoiding sugar is a smart thing if you can and hydrate make juices and, like, and what about honey i like honey 
All right. But it's oh, and raw fats. Raw fats are really powerful, like coconut oil and coconut meat, uh, avocados, walnuts. Um, these, these all, and eat the walnuts by themselves or on top of a salad without fruit, if you can. Okay, no fruit with the nuts. Not fruit yeah, and fruits nuts. and nuts don't mix unless you've got nut milks, which has no fiber. It's the fiber in the nuts that slow everything down. Right. Okay. And again, so the fiber and the nuts, but we want fiber in our diet, don't we? Yeah, but your best to, the more fiber you can get from leafy green vegetables, the better, you know, like the other thing I don't eat raw is broccoli and cauliflower. Right. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Why? Because I create gas. It just ferments in the gut. You need to cook it because it will help it go through the track. Uh, for some reason, cruciferous, I'm going to not murder that word. Cruciferous vegetables are really tough on the digestion unless they're cooked. It just okay. creates a gas situation. This is painful. Okay. Oh, you guys don't have it no. done yet. Oh, okay. Hey, sorry. So, so, thank you. I recognize you're busy. You're still working. You're keeping people fed. Yeah. Thanks, That's man. great service. What, what, um, Tell us about stuff you're doing. We, you know, we're coming to the end now. You're doing shows online. You've got your radio show. When does yeah, that happen? I've got the radio show on Facebook. You can find us at Earthly Dish Radio Show. We interview practitioners each week about their tricks. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to move. The tricks of the trade. And is that then, once a week? Sorry? Once a week, that is? Uh-huh. Once a week we have that. We're on CRM Talk Radio with it if you want to... Uh, Check us out there and also Instagram, Earthly Juices. Okay. Uh, for, for our delivery services, we're at Earthly Juices um, on Instagram or Earthly Juices Living Foods and Cleanses on Facebook. Um, you can also follow me on my profile on Facebook, uh, Jennifer House. Yeah. What about UST? What about any, any workshops you're doing, helping people learn oh, how yeah. to talk? And right. So I have some live feeds uh, every week. Uh, at 12 o'clock, we do a 30 minute to one hour live feed. It's 11 bucks. It's not very much money. 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, yeah? Yeah, and it's on Chef's Feed. So it's on what? Chef's Feed. Chef's Feed. Yeah, Chef's Feed. It's like, uh, it's like a, a network for, for chefs to all right, teach. All right. Great. Yeah, the class is 11 bucks, or uh, if you want to come for free, it's a free juice class. So. It's what? Well, sorry, something happened. What? Yeah, sorry, what did you say? Free, free juice? Free juice class. That's it's the other, free. that's the password to get ah. our class for free on Thursdays. Ah. Um, I don't know. I think okay. that's it. You can also wonderful. you can check out our website at Bring Me Juice. Wonderful, wonderful. Jen, thanks so much for coming on, um, and um, and thanks for all that that good advice. I'm going to have to talk to my popcorn dealer uh, about that. Um, and I know. Cake. I'm trying to think what you can eat instead of popcorn. So crunchy and nice, and you can put salt on it. And I'm putting salmon. I know. Pasta. I loved it. That's why I don't That's eat corn curry. anymore. Um, uh, yeah. God, what to do? What to do? Um, great. Thanks so much for all the work you're doing and feeding the population, and educating us on on what is uh, nutritionally sound and what is otherwise not. All right. Uh, well, thank you. Thanks for coming on, and um, um, we'll speak soon. I'm going to bring yeah, Sridhar along. Big, I guess, okay. Big. Thanks so much, Jen. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. What a great show. Uh, thanks to my guests. Um, let me just pin my video. Thanks to my guests, Jennifer House and Sridhar Silverfine. Um, there it is. I mean, we are in the, the time of um, facing the shit. We're in the time of facing it. And it is our duty to um, surrender into it and come back into the moment and dive into our deep practice. If you're anxious, if you're um, um, tense, uh, look to the foods you're eating. Look to yourself to be able to communicate with yourself. I love you. I'm there for you. I forgive you. 
and the forgiveness. Forgive yourself for things you've done and offer up your forgiveness to other people. Now is really the time for transformation and we can all do it. It's here. Thank you. Thank you. Please forgive me if I've done anything to you um, through my deeds, words, or actions. My name is Mark Abadi. I have a book, bookevolve.com. Check it out. Um, tomorrow, uh, we've got another great show. Uh, Matthew Human, um, amazing musician and uh, spiritual uh, presence. And then we've got two other uh, fantastic uh, musicians, uh, Leela and Thoth, who do the most phenomenal energetic um, enchantment. Really be there for that. Um, that's tomorrow from two till four. Thank you once again. Uh, please share, like the video. And um, my name's Mark Abadi. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to provide and bring these wonderful beings to the forefront. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow.